is a very humane person and i uh, wish um, uh, him all success to, to, and he's going to talk to us on communication skills over to you when please thank you jason at the outset let me thank our state president dr m narayana and dr balachandra or call him as bala the secretary of ime iap kerala state branch and pramod warrior our own president of kochi iap dr sachidanand kamath past iap national president dr ramesh kumar past hsd who is hoping to become the uh, president next year with all our wishes and other dignitaries who are listening to this talk at the outset let me thank dr narayan for giving me this opportunity to do this module that is communication communication skills in priyari practice one of his presidential action plan 2020 when it was formed as narayan told we have formed a whatsapp group and for two three months it was live and uh, the members as well as the coordinators from various zones members are joins like abraham paul jagumar jay jagumar jayram and mohammad kunju praveen raj mohan our own kamath sandosh mk and tus and we formed a consensus and the uh, these things were combined by our president and we came to a conclusion and uh, we made a module we might have left so many things out because this is a laborious process because it should include all the uh, uh, items of pediatric practice so we might have left something if any other member can add something at the end of the talk they can add also so as uh, uh, dr narayan and dr jason told communication skills are needed to speak effectively to the parents who are in a state of distress and confusion interpersonal and communication skills are two essential qualities of every physician in pediatrics there these abilities present even a higher impact it is very important to communicate effectively to the family or the caregiver and the child and the child's parents they in turn will become the partner of the partner is partners and there is the dog, treating doctor's partner in the treatment for the child's illness leading there therefore to a great clinical outcome the few benefits of effective communication lead to first of all build a trust between the doctor and the patient patient the, the, here the parent will be the caretaker building trust preventing or resolving problems providing clarity and direction creates a better relationship that increases the engagement and improves productivity so uh, let us have the first slide as all of you know pediatric practice is different from adult practice patient by law legally is a minor he should he should attain the majority by my major age by the age of 18 till then till that time he is legally minor and for everything each and everything in his life he depends on the family his parents like our education food their dress their shelter and most probably most importantly the health needs we have been we see a child in different different ages that's the, to the first day of life as a new unit when you start resuscitating the child in the labor room then we see him as an infant then as a toddler then as a big boy then we go follow him up to the adolescent age so that the pediatrician don't the role of multiple specialists because we are trained in such a way that each age we, we can treat them for minor ailments and major ailments and serious illnesses so pediatrician is always a uh, multiple specialist unlike other uh, medical fraternity then we come to the communication triad as as we i told earlier child is a legally minor and he may not be able to tell what he has got so we the, 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 we make a what is communication triad that includes the pediatrician the parent and the child triad communication can be used by pediatrician with a pay patient and a caregiver in health care the family members may be involved as listeners or in discussion with the patient children were found to have little quantitative involvement in their own consultation that is between the age of 6 to 12 years they may take part during information gathering but are unlikely to participate in their treatment planning and discussion parts of the consultation even some bo big boys they may participate in the discussion even they can tell their complaints genuine complaints so that that also helps in the progress of the treatment and the 
ബെറ്റർ ഔട്ട് കം ഔട്ട് കം ഓഫ് ദ ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് അപ്പോയിൻമെന്റ്സ് അപ്പോയിൻമെന്റ്സ് കാൻ ബി വേരി ഫ്രം വൺ ക്ലിനിക് ടു വൺ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ ക്ലിനിക് റൺ ബൈ എ സിംഗിൾ പേഴ്സൺ ഓർ എ ബിഗ് മേജർ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ ഓർ എ ടെറിഷറി സെന്റർ but practice by appointment is always ideal that saves a lot of time for the parent as well as the child this busy world when parents are very busy they want to go for a job they were on they will be on duty so always fix an appointment this can be through over the phone they can come and directly book the book the uh, appointment but, but, and uh, in your clinic if you are doing it uh, alone better to keep someone to manage even in a big hospital also there will be people who are in charge of uh, taking appointments it can be over the phones and it can be from the various portals like just dial and various port portals are there and uh, those the, those people can be allowed to take the phone calls and uh, fix the appointment and even in some clinic payments are taken by the people who are engaged in the reception that saves a lot of your time as well as the parents time and you can concentrate more in your practice reception and waiting room first impression is the best impression as soon as the patient comes a good reception and communication between the receptionist and parents should be excellent the receptionist or the care maybe a staff nurse or maybe a layman who is in charge of the reception should be well trained to receive a patient and uh, give him the details of his appointment his time and suppose they come late you have to make arrangements they should be very patient and uh, from there the impression of the hospital and the impression of the doctor who is treating starts sometimes in a busy practice we can see sick children are coming they they cannot wait because they will be genuinely sick they can go to the service receptionist again if it is staff nurse well and good she can make out so many things so they have to be called in with priority and mind that don't charge extra for that because they are already in a very terrible hopeless state so please give him all comfort and take them in and uh, so many new newborn babies are coming for uh, routine well baby clinics routine checkups checkups and for various ailments so the, the, they have to feed in between when the baby is crying so a good feeding room is a must for a clinic or a, a major hospital that should be uh, well lit there should be ideal ideal space there the good, good aeration and it should be always kept uh, tidy and neat especially nowadays they come to the clinic or the hospital with the fear that everywhere covid is there so it should be fumigated every day if possible or at least once in two days and it should be cleaned before the clinic is open uh, regarding periodicals and magazines we used to keep periodicals and magazines in the olden days but now you know they become a source of infection regarding tv putting some cinemas or some may keep the some people entertained or uh, but in my opinion or the opinion we got the consensus we got was always use the tv for educational purpose so that the things will be scrolling through the clinic uh, regarding so you can exhibit regarding the infant feeding uh, uh, good fundamentals of breastfeeding what are the good effect of breastfeeding and uh, various immunization what are the latest vaccines available they may be doing only epi vaccines but what are the new vaccines when to give where to get it what all types of vaccines you have to take so the tv in fact can be used for a health education payments this varies from uh, hospital to clinic in various way and uh, the consultation fees can be fixed by the doctor according to the experience and seniority nowadays the this is a time of cashless payments people may come with card people may come with uh, google play google pay people may come with uh, paytm so the clinic and the receptionist and uh, the doctor also all should be ready to uh, get the get the money through various modalities we cannot just tell them uh, you go go to the just go to the uh, atm and take the money because they are in a hurry so we are we should be better prepared have a swiping machine and to give uh, take all the payments in various modes next is our consultation room as as soon as the parents and the child enters the consultation room they should get a positive energy this should be clean tidy and should be colorful that doesn't mean that the room should be jazzy there should be on the wall you can exhibit lot of caricatures lot of uh, cartoon characters the uh, soothing color to the wall and uh, good table and uh, the doctor where you are sitting everything the child should have, uh, child should enjoy and that gives a positive attitude for the child and most of the children stop crying after seeing all this so that will be very easy for the pediatrician to examine the child toys again a controversial thing previously we used to give lot of toys slides all sorts of things now now better to avoid all those things because as i told this can cause 
lot of uh, uh, infections, spreading of the infection. And uh, next is consolidation. We usually try to avoid interruptions so that we may not lose our concentration. And regarding a phone, there should be a second phone with a second number, which can be used for the, the nurse or the receptionist who can attend to the calls. If she feels it is genuine, if they want to talk to the doctor, they can come to the clinic, inside clinic, and they hand over the phone. They can just finish off their uh, queries and doubts and then hand over the phone back to the receptionist. Regarding computer, computer should be used only for uh, giving uh, prescriptions and then uh, sharing, uh, taking the history. In a bigger setup, you can have a, your own secretary who will sit by the side of you and they will type the history. So that will help when they come for the review. So this may not be possible in all the clinics and in a busy practice, you may not be able to uh, take all the uh, history of the child. And then start the examination. That should be meticulous. And uh, you should be, you should be, you should show concern to the sick child. And you should show, and the patient should feel a comfort and the trust that the doctor is doing good examination. He is not hurrying. Punctuality. What is punctuality? Punctuality shows a doctor's integrity and shows respect for the patient's family and shows that and shows that you respect them, other parties' time, and you are not willing to waste it. This in turn makes the parent also to keep time and be punctual. So it has a two-way benefit. And you should be able to respond promptly to the patient's queries and requests. There should be, they, they may be telling a lot of uh, things which are funny, which may look, uh, what do you call, foolish to you, but you, are, you, you should be with the same uh, peaceful atmosphere. You should uh, correct the queries and requests. And uh, then show the, uh, show the uh, interest. You just see the patient as a person. Show interest in the person. And uh, you should show some compassion and empathy when you examine a child. Now, location of the child during examination. Uh, small babies, neonates, I, I prefer to uh, take the babies to the bed. On the lap, it will be very difficult because they'll be small, but difficult to examine. They come with a lot of dress and a lot of coverings. So better to take to the table so that they can spend some time and or see the exam the child. And then in, for infants, they may prefer and parents may prefer the parents' lap or on the arm of the father or the mother where they will be comfortable so that they, they will get a positive energy as because they are they know that they are under safe hands then toddlers again on the parents lap or again uh, can sit on a stool but they will be freely moving around the room you can even follow them tell tell some jokes uh, offer some uh, small presents and take them back to the seat so they can come and sit comfortably and we can do it for preschool examination, anywhere they like on the stable or they can freely moving in the room, you can sit on the stool. And I have seen Dr. Enna Matai telling me one day when he was examining my brother-in-law's child, when I prefer always child on the shoulder of the mother. So can, I, can I can stand and see the child's back and the and this aspect and post aspect and it will be very easy to hear the sounds and all. This salad is very important. Don't just look, but see. Only if the brain knows, your eyes will see. So it should not be a simple look. You should see what the child has got. Examine the child as a whole. Unlike a physician, it's very easy by experience and your expertise. You can spend little time to see the child as a whole. And don't just hear, but listen. As, uh, as all of us know, listening is an intentional activity, whereas hearing is something that happens without any intention. So always listen to the patient. And parents also should feel that you are listening. Then uh, uh, don't just touch them, but feel them. Uh, give a gentle feel. The child may be crying after some time. If they, they may enjoy your touch and your feel, and they will usually help us to examine them. And the next uh, three slides, there is a lot of confusion and this between overlap between the words pity, compassion, sympathy, and empathy. So in, a short, in a nutshell, Pity is the feeling of sympathy or sharing the suffering of another human being. While compassion is the feeling of mercy, pity is an emotion while compassion is both an emotion and a virtue. Again, between sympathy and empathy. Empathy is often confused with pity, sympathy and compassion. But you know, empathic people feel the pain of others. And again, sympathy is a shared feeling, usually of sorrow, pity or compassion for another person. 
empathy is stronger than sympathy it is the ability to put yourself in their shoes or in the place of others and understand someone's feeling by identifying with them you should go along with the patient and truth and transparency they should see that uh, they should feel that you are seeing a doctor who is very trustworthy is very true to his child and the transparency of your uh, uh, previous experience uh, your uh, expertise everything you should feel that the doctor is very transparent you can approach him so a transparency build is a must for a good personal communication a good communication skill and they improve the, the quality of your practice is making the diagnosis only our aim our communication is a two way process we have seen lot of lot of time that when the child, we ask but the child has fever or this thing then the parents start stories you may have to be patient a study conducted show around showed that 70% were interrupted by doctors in their first sentence never do that give a patient hearing at least for some time then you can stop give a stop and tell that uh, uh, clear all the doubts and again you can ask about the past history and what he has been suffering their family stay everything so overall we have just been found that 80% of the patients were interrupted by doctors while talking this must be stopped because that that, that, that destroys your uh, good 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 name and uh, now it has been found that average consultation time in our country in india is around 2 minutes that is too less what i feel even if you sit for a long time you are tired you are bored but you should give enough time maybe 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes maybe for a review okay 1 minute 2 minutes is okay but if it is a new case you must spend enough time for the parents to uh, do the examination listening skill most basic and powerful way to connect to a patient is a listening skill non verbal communication non verbal communication refer, refers to gestures facial expressions tone of voice eye contact or eye contact or lack thereof body language posture and other way and these are communication skill we use people can communicate without using oral or verbal oral or written language so it is a most important part of the listening skills can get some reliable history as i told early because while examining the big child for bit say between 5 and 12 and only they can give their reliable history even from a small child that also will exam, help, help our examination he is making this say what are the elements of personal communication interpersonal communication has elements as a various elements like a sender a receiver a medium encoding and decoding and feedback and then, so there is a flow of information between the sender or receiver then you can see that 55 7 and 38 what is 7% 38% 55% rule the 7 38 55 rule is a concept concerning the communication of emotions the blue the rule states that 7% of meaning is communicated through spoken word 38% through tone of voice and 55% through body language relationship this this is a most important thing there there should be a relation between the, the child the child's family and ourselves you should create a sustain a relationship that is yeah. even therapeutic for the patient because without yeah. medications if you reassure to a patient who is so confident in you like without medical med- medication you can treat so many things we we are seeing a lot of with simple viral fevers with just paracetamol they may come with a lot of doubts whether he needs antibiotic but good words and your type of examination is always a therapeutic for the patient and support this also supportive for their families and pay attention to the patient and and should give real care for the patient emotional support emotion uh, because like an adult like in geria uh, geriatrics or a adolescent a small child also have emotions so you should always respond to the child's and parents emotions we have discussed empathy and compassion and this empathy and compassion this qualities in a doctor is the most important part of the communication communication skill that increases patient adherence and satisfaction good practice basics you should professionalism over the years your experience and your study can make the uh, doctor a good professional and the personal integrity that they should understand that you are here personally uh, you have a good personal integrity integrity then then the belief and the trust in you increases ethics of practice all of us know you should be very straightforward 
I should be very free to the patient. They can ask anything and they, they know that you will be clearing their doubts and uh, taking payments and booking, booking appointments, starting from A to Z, the ethics of practice we should do. We are taught as a, a student and even now we are learning what are the ethics of practice. Never go against ethics. If you don't know, you admit it. You take opinion from some other doctor. If you they ask for so many uh, new things, you may not be able to uh, know that. You tell that uh, maybe there's a new uh, this thing coming into the uh, arena so that I will refer and tell you next time. So ethics, you should keep in your practice. Decision making is an important point. After examination, that is a, the, the, the turn comes for the decision making. You should always respect parents' participation in decision making. But any step in diagnosing, you should always discuss with the parent. Such I am uh, finding such and such things. Uh, I am explaining everything to you. And it should be, so that is called, you should be very authentic in uh, making a diagnosis and uh, uh, telling the patient, uh, parent that your child is having such and such problems. This slide, uh, we already discussed about the non-verbal thinking, listening and speak. Good communication, what is the good result of good communication? That can reduce the number of investigation. And uh, never give a chance to the patient, doctor, you are not done an investigation. Shall, shall we do this thing? Never give a chance. You should understand when investigation is required. In, in case they ask that question, you can tell them. Never deny the investigation outright. And you can even tell them that uh, it's not necessary. Why unnecessary investigation? If you don't know, uh, if, if I don't know, or if the doctors don't know about the correct diagnosis, we may go in for investigation. I mean, is, it is necessary. You should do it. That, that can reduce the amount of medications. And... Uh, uh, as, as far as possible, fewer referrals because if you can manage, you can refer, you can always manage the child. Only if required, you can refer to a senior doctor or a senior center or a tertiary center. And uh, you should give a better uh, patient satisfaction. When he leaves the room, the patient and the parent should have a better satisfaction. And even in turn, the doctor also gets satisf satisfaction thinking that and uh, seeing that patients are very happy when they leave the, when they leave the room. And when they start telling doctor, I mean, my child has been suffering for a long time and after coming to you, the, the child is improving. That is the most important gift a doctor can get more than money. Money is, the, is a matter, of, we all know, but this word is very important. And better management of the illness is the next step that we, we all can do because of our expertise and uh, professional and knowledge. Communication risk. Here starts the problems. Suppose a patient comes, you don't tell, you take it at ease and tell, okay, we can treat this, no problem, the child will be okay. But if you see something fishy, you should definitely tell them that we are, suppose, for example, a okay, child come with the first episode of febrile seizure. You may be telling, so don't worry, it is a febrile seizure, nothing to worry, child will be okay. But you, next word, you should tell that the first episode, it can be even an intracranial infection, or maybe due to some septicemia or various metabolic disorders. So, or even, also you must tell them, we are anticipating all these things. We have to wait and you may have to go for lumbar puncture. Most of the patients will deny lumbar puncture. But you should tell if it is really required. Over the years with expertise, you can know whether the child has got any neck rigidity or we can go in for whether septicemia or encephalitis. So if it is really necessary, you should see that. Don't think that you are losing the patient because of lumbar puncture. You must do it. A review. Never forget about the review. Suppose you are giving medical medicine for one week, ask the patient to come on such and such state and should have a review. Because what happens, after three days, child will be improving, they will stop the medication and the child may not turn up. And after 10, 15 days, they will come and tell doctor, I have given all the medicines, but you should, if you ask them to come on such and such state, we can definitely ask back, I have asked you to come on Thursday or Friday, why you didn't come? And uh, again, when a diagnosis or treatment needs confirmation, the child has to come back. Referrals this is the most important thing. When a child is referred to another center, give a detailed discharge report with all investigation results. When you are not confident about the outcome, refer to a higher center. And, and another case, you see that when the patient has no confidence in your treatment, better to refer. That you can make out from the body language. Suppose fever is there for third day, fourth day, fifth day is not improving. The child's, uh, the parent's <coughs> attitude will change. We can make out. So, that time, the doctor also may lose their, uh, what do you call, mood. So the, you'll be scrolling something and sending the patient to a doctor. Never do that. You must keep your full 
and the patient is referred, you should take them to the in your confidence and they give discharge summary. And uh, most of the time, we'll be sending to your own colleague who, who is uh, lucky to have working in a major tertiary hospital with so many subspecialties. You are, if you are alone in your clinic, you may, or if you're alone, a uh, child specialist in a, in a small hospital, you don't, you don't have anybody to ask any doubt because if, if you ask physician, they may not be able to tell anything about pediatrics. So your friend will be there for your as your helping hand. So you can even make a phone call before they're going. In front of the patient, you can make a phone call and tell them, I am sending to such and such doctor. He's my close friend. He will take care of you. If, if you possible, call the consultant and discuss the case before the patient reaches there. This will always boost the confidence of the patient. Antibiotics. This is a well, slide of controversy because antibiotics should be taken only through prescription. We should know whatever method we use, but the, the, the pharma, there's a dispensary people, uh, not in the hospital, this outside uh, uh, this, uh, this thing, medical shops, they give simply the uh, antibody without any prescription. Always while, while starting uh, antibody, you should tell the risk of antibody resistance. You just tell that we are almost reaching the end of the pipeline. We don't have any more uh, antibiotics. We, are, we don't have any more research going on once these antibodies are reached. So teach them that antibodies are not used in all the fevers, especially in this might be a viral fever, you can get two to two or three days. And the India is famous for combination medicines. Avoid as far as possible combination medicines. Breaking the bad news of a sick child. This is the most important point because you are in a dilemma. The moment you step into the, or you may get a call from the ward, sorry, it's a peripheral report, has, peripheral smear report has come, child is having, leukemia. You are in a dilemma because you are seeing that child from a long time. You have got a good association with the patient and the family, how to break the news. So the best thing is you ask them whether you have got any doctor in your family, you have done a modern medicine course. Or just MPBS who is practicing, he may be knowing all, all sorts of things. So you can call him to come down to the hospital before revealing the diagnosis to the parent. You can talk to him and explain easy. He will in turn educate others in a much better way. Handling certain difficult situations. Off late, you have been facing so many violent mob. Today it will happen to one hospital, tomorrow it can happen to my hospital, even my clinic. So be always aware of Hospital Protection Act. It is, in, uh, it is a rule now, it has been passed by the uh, legislature. So that, that uh, rule you should know. Always install CCTV. There is a must in each and every vantage point of the clinic or the hospital because that, that, that will be recorded and uh, you can we can show when suppose it comes to the court or uh, the judicial procedure, you can immediately show that uh, video footage. First, okay, take a uh, thing, uh, make it a point that protect your body. The mob will always outnumber your staff and the most of the security staff may not be able to control the mob. And uh, if something happens, uh, you make it a point that uh, the hospital staff should have a name of your friend. You just call them or inform the police, IME, friends at the earliest. And this is a very sad situation, holding certain, handling certain difficult situation. Death is inevitable. Don't leave the scene unless there is a violence. You must be with the patient because if you are a good communicator, you must have told all the communication which are going to happen and what is going to happen tomorrow. So you, are, you have got that secure feeling. You convince that everything possible has been done. Even the parents also used to tell, doctor, you have tried to your maximum. We know the uh, shortcoming. You don't have any shortcomings. We are very happy here. But some people may even tell, God, that, that is, God has taken him to uh, safer hands. And uh, so see to it that if possible in a doubtful case, Ask them for autopsy. Don't ask the father or mother. You can tell again that medical person in the family or some close relative who is sensible. Who uh, tell because if the parents, if you tell autopsy, they will outright they will reject. But tomorrow, if something happens, autopsy is a must. Telephonic consultation. Previously, we all used to discourage. Even we used to write on the uh, physician pad, "Don't uh, make telephonic calls." But nowadays, consider COVID as a special situation. If unavoidable, suggest the medicine and. Uh, they may ask for a, uh, they may ask the, the telehistory and give a medicine. So don't give a new medicine. The medicine which you have been, has been taking for a long time, you can continue it and come and show that uh, to the doctor. Suppose it's a simple illness, you can give a paracetamol for one day and come and show. 
no new medications, especially antibodies, should be given on the telephone. Google is another field because the younger we are seeing a lot of younger generation who are in the IT field. They come and they they will have more information than us. So don't get annoyed when they start quote Google because we should respect. So uh, you also should read all the latest things. That is professionalism. You should move in the world. You should have learn how to teach, uh, attend all the CMEs. You should listen to talks. You should attend conferences. You should read all journals and should be up to date so that you can catch up with the new generation people. And you can even rely, uh, recommend reliable states, uh, sites so that they can approach that and, uh, and don't uh, uh, visit unnecessary sites. And uh, the, the interpretation of a lab result, when the lab result comes, there'll be a lot of variation lymphocyte is more, neutrophils are more, but they, this, just tell them and convince them it's a normal variation and we should not just ignore their concern. We should tell that there are some false positive tests they are not significant. If only one thing is positive, other things are negative. Don't worry, this can happen. So false positive. In simple words, we can make them understand and must explain its insignificance. Immunization. Actually, Kerala has been leading all through for the uh, success of the immunization. Now we, should, we, we are seeing a lot of immunization failures are happening in our country. So this is an area special to pediatric consultation. And so, and again, unlike adult practice, immunization is an area special to pediatric practice. It has an important role in our health sector. How best we can promote immunization in our practice? Because we, we should tell them, they, are, uh, they know only EPA, which are available in government sector. You should make them understand that a lot of new vaccines have come. You should have an updated schedule with them. Never use a, uh, try to never to use a file gifted by a pharma company. Either an authentic government or an IAP schedule to be used. You should uh, show, when they come with the government card, you should show an IAP schedule. These are the things, new uh, vaccines are available. So you must give the child. Uh, but then they may ask, what is optional vaccine? Optional, if you can suppose the parent can afford, definitely you can give it. And a IAP should, uh, I asked the President, Dr. Nav I asked President Dr. Narayanan and the incoming presidents and secretaries should make a uniform card, make it a point that a presentable immunization card should be given to the IAP. And uh, there are people, there are well, the same vaccine coming at different price and uh, with a different uh, this thing. And also, what you would tell one changing of brand, I am giving you this vaccine. They are worried about the cost because previous, previous hospital, they might have given a higher cost. Now you are giving a vaccine which is lesser, lesser price of this, but it is the same vaccine. Tell them that the difference between the vaccines so that they may curse the previous hospital or you even if you change the brand. Drug rashes. This is a place, this is a, a big problem in labeling rashes as exanthematous fever as drug rash. The characteristics of an allergic rash following a drug to be differentiated from an exanthem by history before discarding a drug as allergenic. We can see exanthematous rashes in viral fever, even a bit of uh, rash to, to the dengue fever, Kawasaki, Kawasaki fever. And uh, so just tell them that these are uh, exanthems, it's not due to a drug. Should we discontinue a drug just for suspicious drug? Never do that. Suppose you are confident about the rash, just tell them this is not due to drug. We should be really trained. It comes automatically with your experience to differentiate between a drug rash and other viral exanthem. Drug reactions. Tell them that all drugs on earth, including paracetamol or simple medications, will have side effects. Mind, even homeo medicine, also even IRD medicines can have allergies. So that also you should make a stress that not only allopathy medicines, but other uh, medical fraternities also can cause allergy. It is seen only in some, in some small majority. Drug is not at a fault. Some bodies are always reactogenic or allergic to some medicines. Such bodies only react, not all, not, not all the bodies. Now comes the examination of an adolescent. Now we have the, uh, what do you call it? We have the responsibility of seeing an adolescent child. We were uh, okay by for 12, 14 years. Now, after that, it's a very difficult field. And uh, in my opinion, every pediatrician must get a good training and uh, under the specialist in adolescent care and should have basic knowledge of an adolescent. They should be always, they might, they should always treat as adults, adults because they are in a no man's area. Physician won't take, pediatrician won't, won't be knowing, but you should be able to identify their problems and you should be get tra well good training in adolescent uh, pediatrics. 
what is posco the protection of children from sexual offence act 2002 was enacted to provide a robust legal framework for the protection of children from offence of sexual assault sexual harassment and uh, pornography while safeguarding the interest of the child at every stage of the judicial process in patient care how to uh, once you admit the child you should be very vigilant you should make uh, rounds regularly you even on sundays if you get time you must go there don't leave to the duty doctors or the who are not well versed and who are don't have the capacity to uh, see the patient always you should a good assisted hospital who can manage in your absence be meticulous in writing the case sheet because this is the most important document this is a bible when a case comes to the court you can produce the case sheet i have i have been following the case our paper is a progress is this lawyers no they study better than us and come and kill you in the court suppose something happens so the progress report on each day with the date and time is a must and uh, leave some blank space in between if you want to add something more you can fill that space and uh, your uh, for your protection always renew the pps schemes on time we our own people uh, causes misters in society for doctors we got a degrading of moral values mulli chudi ella field lum mulli chudi and intolerance yellow journalism unwanted publicity for the small things they give big things to small about uh, this thing because every uh, paper or every print media every television they are uh, competing each other for bring out a new news or breaking news so we should be very careful and the big healthcare divide now i think only less than 10% of the people are having insurance most 80% of the people don't have insurance in particular rural areas or some urban areas so that's why we, those who are having health uh, insurance they are on the safer hands but because now the treatment has gone to such a uh, and the treatment cost has escalated to such an extent that uh, you may have to sell your property and the, the the people land up in poverty at the end of the treatment so this big healthcare how to and lit there are a lot of yojanas coming from the central government and state government karunya project so many things are there they should we are all uh, our iap should uh, move with the government to get healthcare uh, insurance to all the ch- all the children so that big healthcare divide can be so further gap can be filled and lack of communication uh, we already discussed about that good communication should be there and lack of empathy and poor record keeping all we have discussed these all things causes a mistrust about ourselves in the society for doctors hippocrates said cure sometimes but treat often comfort them always the ability of a doctor to provide comfort through his presence and words is a fundamental component of good medical care be human not robo so to sum up being a good doctor with a good communication uh, expert communication knowledge they should respect people healthy or ill regardless of who they are support patients and their loved ones when they were they are needed promote health as well as treat diseases embrace the power of information and communication technologies to support people with the best available information while respecting their individual values and preferences always ask courteous questions let people talk and listen them carefully give unbiased advice let people participate actively in all decision related to the health and he- health care assess each situation carefully and help whatever the situation use evidence as a tool not as a determination of practice humbly accept death as an important part of life and help people make the best possible arrangements when death is close work cooperatively with other members of the healthcare system or other specialities and even with your colleagues be proactive pro- 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 advocates for their pa- patients mentors for other health professionals and ready to learn from them regardless of their age role or status finally we want do- to good doctors to have a balanced life and care for themselves and their families as well as others in some we want doctors to be happy and healthy caring caring and competent and good travel com- and good travel com- companion for people through the journey we call life unfortunately we don't have a genie or a magic lamp to the to, to uh, so we must use our own skills and endeavors it is an awesome responsibility so thank you very much for the kind listening thank you
Thank you, Dr. Venugopal. Fantastic talk. It's uh, so excellent.